Breathe on me, breath of God. Oh, even at my perilous, that I may have what thou hast got, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, and to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Here we lay, and lay Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness, and not in accord with the tradition that you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, we did not eat anyone's bread without pain, but with toil and labour we worked night and day, that we might not burden any of you. It was not because we had not that right, but to give you in our conduct an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, if anyone will not work, let him not eat. Now may the Lord of peace himself 
give you peace at all times, in all ways. The Lord be with you all. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. This is the mark in every letter of mine. It is the way I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in His ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy, blessed and prosper. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. Blessed are all who fear the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The ever keeps Christ's word. In him truly love for God is perfected. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets, and adorn the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's reading from St. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, he writes that everyone who does not work should not eat. Some people have used this verse as a scriptural justification to eliminate or curtail certain kinds of government assistance to those in need. Christians good Christians, can come to different conclusions about government programs, but that is not the subject about which St. Paul is writing. St. Paul is referring to people who brought their lives to a halt and were simply waiting for the Lord to return in glory. St. Paul had written that the Lord's return in glory would be sudden, but not necessarily immediate. He had been misunderstood, and this led to complacency 
of some Christians in the face of evil. St. Paul is telling them and us to get back to work. When the Lord returns, He should find us at work in the vineyard. There is a tendency among some Christians today to pray for things to change and do nothing about it. During the oil crisis years ago, some prayed for the discovery of more oil, while perhaps the prayer should have been for a greater responsibility on our part in the use of our natural resources. The complacency about which we need to be careful is that of leaving the solution of all of society's wrongs to the law. Actually, this is a discredited tendency from centuries ago called quietism. It is the notion that the Lord will change what he once changed. Jesus healed illness and preached truth during his earthly life. He did not leave the correcting of all wrongs to the time of his return in glory. We are called to prepare a people for him. Our work as Christians enables others to see something of Christ in us today and perhaps come to a deeper faith in him today. The return of Jesus in glory is not meant to replace but to conclude and make permanent every work of ours and of the Church. We are called to be watchful in prayer at all times, with trust and confidence let us pray to God for all our needs. Let us pray for the development of ministry in the Church. We remember our Pope Francis and the bishops, the priests and deacons, and all who serve in ministries. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for all who work for peace, we remember the work of the United Nations and all the work in security forces for our protection. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the safety and well-being of all who are on, on holiday. We remember all who work in the service of tourists and holiday makers and those who give hospitality to strangers. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the work of food production. We remember all who work on the land and those who assist them, and we ask at this time for suitable weather. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, we are the people you have chosen as your own, and we give thanks. Be our protection and our help at all times, through the saving merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself the people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chance of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Abula our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the Resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph the Spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through with him and with him and with him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
those of you who cannot receive Holy Communion right now, I invite you to pray with me this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the hour of battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits, who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Breathe on me, bread of God, till I am holy thy, until this earthly part of me flows with thy life divine. Breathe on me, bread of God, so shall I never die. Uh-huh.